texture. Page five, texture. Super focus on the count of three to the definition on texture. Super focus one, two, three. Shh. Circle that. And we're going to read it together out loud in clear, concise voices. Go. Texture, an element of art that refers to the surface quality as being rough, smooth, soft, etc. It can be actual or implied. Here you're going to write your own definition of texture. Actual texture, put a, defin or put a circle around that definition. Everything with a circle on it will be on the test. Actual texture is texture you can actually touch and feel. For example, pottery, sculpture, and weaving. Implied texture, put it a circle or oval around that. Implied texture, texture you can't feel, but you can see it. For example, photographs or drawings. So imagine in my left hand, I have a real piece of toast. In my right hand, I have a photograph of a piece of toast. The one that I can actually feel, and I can actually taste, and I could actually eat, is the actual texture. The one that is a photograph, and it looks like it would be rough, but it's not really rough, it's smooth, and if I try to take a bite out of it, it's not going to be very tasty, that's implied texture. So we're going to draw examples down here of ten different examples of texture. The first one is grass. Now you can draw grass however you'd like. Nice. Look. Wilson, get your tail out of the way. Wilson, get your tail out of the way. You can draw grass like this or this. Or here are two more examples of how to draw grass. Now the one thing that would make this look like fire or grass is what? Think about it. It's an element of art and it's a context clue. Without this context clue, it could be grass or fire. What do you think it is? Yell it out if you think you know. Survey says color. If this were green, it would look like grass. If this were red, it would look like fire. So in the first space here, you are going to draw an example of grass. Draw it however you'd like, whatever your idea of grass is. want to put some bugs in there, you could do that if you want. Very good. Okay, the next one is a furry animal. Here we have several furry animals. The key in this is that we are creating texture. So this one has no texture. This is a smooth line around the outside of this animal. That does not work. This is more of a uh, sort of a cross between an organic and geometric line. But either way, they are fuzzy. This is my evil, evil bunny. He has fangs. Better watch out for him. Some more examples of furry animals. I know, I think that's like um, uh, maybe a gremlin. I'm not sure. And a monkey. Just make sure that when you draw it, that you don't make smooth lines to create the form or the shape, the form of the animal. And just a little trick here, this is a good way to make the mouth. That's not really an animal's mouth. That's a human mouth on an animal. This is how you make an animal's nose. You make an upside down triangle. And instead of making a straight line here, you make a curved line. Then you bring these two lines here. This is his mouth or her mouth and a few little dots there. Okay, animal nose. Go ahead and draw your furry animal. Draw your furry animal there. Make sure you have fur on him. It is furry. So in this space, draw your furry animal I like to start with the eyes so I can kind of place where everything's going to go. I think I'm going to make mine cross-eyed. I think this is like a really mean-looking sheepdog. 
furry animal. Okay, the next one is hair. Now, on this one, we need a context clue again. If you just draw the hair, then we're really not going to have any idea what that is. You need to also draw. You need to also draw the face. Okay, so your examples of hair. We have some spiky hair over here, like this guy's really scared. Some curly hair. Some. Oh, I guess this is like when you get the buzz cut. Make sure you include the face. And here we have some more spiky hair. This one is started off as a chick, but then I added the mustache and the little chin, little, 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 little beard, and now it looks like Shaggy from Scooby-Doo. And here we've got a Fu Manchu at the bottom here, and this one, this one is my husband, Mr. Little. It's like the shiny top and then a little fuzzy on the sides. So in this space here, you're going to draw hair. Start with your face and then draw the hair on top. Then also go inside of the, the hair and make more texture. Texture! Yay! Texture! Okay, that guy's wondering what is on top of his head. Look, he looks a little freaked out. Okay, the next one is wood. You can draw either one of these different ways of creating wood. You can draw a log or you can draw a 2 by 4 If you would like to draw, well, I'll show you both. The log, to make a log, make two parallel horizontal lines. You make a little branch that comes down here. And then instead of making geometric lines on the sides, the left and the right, make those either zigzag geometric or more organic. Kind of a cross between the two. Then you're going to put in the texture. It has to have the wood texture for this to be complete. So think about what the texture on a log looks like. Texture on a tree. Okay. Now a two by four. To make a two by four, start with a rectangle, then make three, three, uno, dos, tres, uno, dos, tres, three parallel diagonal lines. So parallel is this direction. I'm sorry, diagonal is this direction. These three are parallel because they are all going the same direction. They are parallel to each other. Then you're going to make a horizontal line touching this point and this point. Now this horizontal line has to be parallel to this line. So I'm going to make another horizontal line parallel to this one. And the last one is a vertical line that needs to be vertical and parallel to this line. Then you put in your texture. Now if those horizontal lines, horizontal parallel, horizontal parallel lines, if they are too long or too short, these lines here, then shorten them or make them longer. Because this line here, it must be horizontal and parallel to this one. This one must be vertical and parallel to this one. And it has a little bit of the texture at the end here too. Very good, very good. And this space right here, Draw your example of wood. And draw my and draw a log. And then it's not complete without the texture inside the log. And draw the texture inside the log. Yeah, looks like bark. Looks like bark. Very good. Draw your wood with the texture, the wood texture, in that space. Okay, next we have spider web. 
Now the spider web, I have a very, very, very specific way I want you to draw the spider web. Spider pig, spider pig. Super focus on the screen, one, two, three. Sing along with me. Spider pig, spider pig, does whatever a spider pig does. Can he swing from a web? No, he can't because he's a pig. Look out, here comes a spider pig. Okay, it never said I could sing, but I'll do it anyway. Okay, when we draw a spider web, first of all, think about how a spider web works. It has to have tension. Visualize a spider web that you've seen recently. If you went up to a spider web and you plucked off a few of the spider's strings, it would collapse. So, first thing we're going to do is make diagonal line corner to corner, and it's absolutely important that it touches. First, I want you to watch. Don't draw yet. Don't not draw. You need to watch. And I'm going to make another diagonal line. Whoops. Got a little too. That's fine. So that now they are perpendicular. They're touching in the middle here. I'm going to make a vertical line. And I want to make sure that that crosses over the X that I already made. And then a horizontal line from that. Then I'm going to start in the center. And I'm going to go around. Start here, make a curved line, go in and up, go down and up, down up, down up, down up, down up, down up. I'm going to bring this one in a little bit shorter. Then each time I reach where I started from, I'm going to make it a little bit bigger. So up, down up, down up, down up. And keep on filling that out. Make sure that they're curved lines. Keep filling that out. If you have another way of creating spider webs, awesome. But this, this is how I want you to do it on this worksheet. And keep going down and up and down and up. You're going to fill the entire frame with the spider web. Now this line here, it's run out. I can't add any more to that. So I'm going to come to the outside edge. It'll look like it's going off the frame. Fill the entire space with a little spider rub. There we go. Now if you would like to make a spider pig, you don't have to. You don't have to make a spider pig, but if you want to, this is how you make a spider pig. To make the spider pig. Start with a, an oval and then shade it in. So you just go right over those lines you just made. Then you're going to make a circle for the head. Shade that in. Then make a little rectangle coming off, a little bit curved at the end for the snout. Triangle for the ear. Two little cylinders curved at the bottom for the feet. Spider pig, spider pig, and then a little curly line for the tail. Does whatever a spider pig does. Okay, now in this space here you're going to draw your spider web. You do not need to draw an extra frame in there, you're going to use the frame that you have. I want you to underline spider web. Then you're going to start with a diagonal line from corner to corner here. Do the other direction, diagonal line. Make a vertical line through the perpendicular line that you just made. And a horizontal line through all the other lines that converged. Then you're going to curve your line. Make sure you're using a pencil because if you make a mistake, then you can use that cool thing that I showed you before, that eraser. Pretty high tech. Try to get right on that line. Try to end right at that line. Spider web. Complete your spider web. Don't forget, at the end of the video, everything the, the demonstration will play again, so if you need a little bit more time.
Okay, a leaf. Our next one, lower left hand corner, is a leaf. Leaf has these little veins inside, and that's the texture. Now you can create any type of leaf that you like, but the, the part that I'm requiring you to do is this texture here. So think about as you're making the veins, the veins come off the leaves, make them get a little bit smaller each time, a little bit thinner. They come off each other and make that texture of your leaf. Any type of leaf that you'd like to make is fine. So in the lower left hand corner we're going to draw your leaf. Now remember you can always move this and the back of the book so it's not right underneath where you're drawing. So I'm going to start with my outside shape first. And then I'm going to draw in the texture of the veins on the inside of the leaf. Make sure that it goes gets smaller as the little veins get smaller as they come off the main center vein. Leaf. Okay, next is brick. Cause she's a brick house. Okay, to make your brick, you're going to make a cube, an elongated rectangular cube, like so. You make your vertical and horizontal lines very geometrically to make your rectangle. Then you make three parallel, three parallel diagonal lines. That means they all need to go the same direction. Try to get them as close to the same length as you can. Then you're going to make a vertical parallel line to this line. Vertical and parallel. And a ver or I'm sorry, horizontal parallel line here. Up here. Then here's the important part, the texture. So I'm going to make a lot of little dots. If I don't hear this annoying noise in my classroom, then you're not doing it right. I need to hear the tapping. My marker has felt on the end of it, so it's, it's buffered. It should be louder like this. The reason it has this texture, this rough texture, is because it has lots of small little stones in there with the sand and the cement to make it structurally sound. Okay, texture of a, of a brick. So now draw your brick in this space here. Make your rectangle. Your two parallel, I'm sorry, three. Three parallel diagonal lines. Three. Uno, dos, tres. Uno, dos, tres. Then this is vertical here. You're going to make a vertical line parallel to this line and then a horizontal line here. You're going to make a parallel horizontal line to this line here. Then you're going to make your texture by putting all the little dots in it. Go ahead and draw your brick. Cause she's a brick house. She's mighty mighty. Brick. Next we have bubbles. Bubbles, bubbles, bubbles. Now notice on the bubbles that they are circles, but they have the illusion of a reflection. The illusion of the reflection comes from these parallel curved lines, then these parallel curved lines become parallel and perpendicular. So start with making a circle. Then you're going to make parallel curved lines. They need to be parallel to the outside edge of the circle. Then you're going to make two more curved parallel lines that go over this one. Make sure they're curved because it's showing that there's a reflection coming off a round object. Bubbles! Draw your bubbles in this space right here. So what that's showing is a smooth texture. 
curved, parallel, curved, parallel, and perpendicular. Draw your bubbles. Pretty bubbles. Hello, oh, bubbles. Okay, the next thing is falling snow. Oh, oh, oh. Now we need a context clue. We need a context clue for falling snow. If I do not have my snowman there, then it just looks like asterisks, dots, and dashes. So you must put a snowman for a context clue. These are three types. This one, this is a big, fluffy, pretty snowflakes that come down. The kind you hope they come down Christmas Day. These, this is sleet. This is my favorite one. It's a combination. Sleet, snow, big snowflakes, wet snowflakes. This is a snow day right there. This might be a snow day too. This one, it's just pretty. Draw your snow in this space here. So start with your snowman or snow woman. Snowman. Start with your snowman here. So we know that it's a context clue. Give him a little hat if you want. He's really small. Then I'm going to draw my snow. And I'm drawing sleet. I'm drawing sleet because I'm hoping that's a snow day type of snow. Not that I don't love being here. Love ya. But I really like to sleep in. Snow days rock. Don't forget from elementary school the way to get a snow day is to put your pajamas inside out and backwards and a spoon under your pillow. Okay, draw your falling snow. And the last one is fire, fire. Going to draw fire in your last space. Now, remember we talked about the very first one was grass. This, if I make that green, it could look like grass. If I make it red, it's going to, or red, orange, warm colors, then it'll look more like fire. So we need to put a context clue in there. Here I have logs. So logs with the fire coming out of it. You have a couple of options here. You could do the logs with the fire coming out of it, or you could do a match. So in the bottom space, Right here, you're going to draw your fire. Now, quickly, I'm going to show you the basic, basic way to draw fire. Get a curvy line and then make it short or make it sharp there. Make it come back down parallel to that line and then bring it up again. And do a series of those. Make sure that you include either logs or a match. And this guy right here, he's a dork. He's a snowman trying to roast a marshmallow. That's really not going to work out the way he hopes. Okay, so go ahead and finish your page on texture. Then when you are finished, you're going to go up to, when you're finished with your drawings, go back up to the top and write your definition in your own words. Remember, it doesn't even have to be a full sentence. Anything that you want. Anything that helps you remember the definition. Basically, te texture is the way something feels. When you touch it, what it feels like, or when you look at it, what it looks like it would feel like. Okay, finished texture.